start with that? <laughs> Why did I start with that? Hey? Wait up. Wait That's the Eurovision Song Contest winner for this year. It was won by Sweden. We are the heroes of our time. Oh. <laughs> as a seminar. So why did I start with We're the Heroes of Our Time by Sweden? Comments, comments, comments. <laughs> oh, we're all heroes of our time. Uh... We're heroes of our time. We have challenges. But for me, Sweden is an interesting case. I've been really fascinated by Sweden. At the time, I mean, in First World War time, Sweden went to war on their mining industry profits. So Sweden are a mining country. They're a technology country. They're an innovation country. I love the way they use technology in that song. And I think that some of the messages in that song are very pertinent to where we are. So, anybody got anything that I've left out? Anything to add? Okay, I'm going to play it again. <laughs> but, but, but seriously. So.
from check the box, procedure driven engagement, to ongoing meaningful and substantial collaboration. From one dimensional managers to leaders who can navigate the risks and opportunities presented by geopolitical, environment, government and social and economic issues. We want to go from standalone sustainability technocrats to integrated systems thinkers. We want to move from prescribed, closed, linear, formulaic approaches to ensuring creativity through the inclusion of diverse worldviews. What does this look like? Now this is my last slide from the Kellogg's Innovation Network Catalyst. But they talk about mining companies need to maintain their license to operate to ensure land markets and capital. We do that to do this by co-inspire, co-collaborate, co-innovate, and co-educate with a shared purpose, with flourishing ecosystems, and with competitive companies, communities, and countries. And the pillars that these stand on, the aspiration, where do we want to be, the strategic pillars, what components do we need to focus on, what will get us there, and why do companies need to do this? So this is their view that comes up where we want to go to. But we have our own view. So what's come out of the SMI, here's a paper by Chris and Nadia, was published last year in the Journal of Cleaner Production, moving from operating sustainably to sustainable development. So here if we look at the minerals and energy sustainability, we've got operating sustainably, which is how activities to generate new wealth are undertaken. Moving to sustainable development, the distribution and sharing of value from new wealth. So, so on this side, we go from the bottom, unit operations, through tasks, individual operations, regions, countries, multinational and multiple corporations, through to the global uh, consequences of resources, access, trade and use. So the other way of looking at this, looking at minerals and energy sustainability, looking at operating sustainability, and this is the maturity model that we're well aware of in the SMI, with going from least sustainable to most sustainable, and we're looking at the four stages, and I guess we, in many ways, are somewhere between efficiency focused and integrated by connecting. But this is the operating sustainability. This isn't where we want to go to. We want to go to sustainable development, where we have four equity conditions. The future needs are being met, We've got satisfied receiving countries. We've got profitable discovery and transfer agents and prosperous supply countries. There we go. We're talking about equity. We're talking about long-term relationships. We're talking about value being distributed and shared. So how do we look at it? We can look at it in the five capitals model. We look at our, our, manu our manufactured capital and financial capital our social and human capital, and our natural capital. And we haven't got time to do all that today. My focus is on human capital. In fact, my personal vision has become to build future leadership capacity through postgraduate education in the context of applied research and technology development, <coughs> including industry engagement, that builds international communities of world-leading practice and contributes to the sustainability of the provision of minerals and metals to the world by the mining industry. You can see the subtle, the subtle difference. It's not sustaining the mining industry. It's sustaining the provision of minerals and metals to the world by the industry. So let's take James Bond analogy. How do we do this? What's the transition? So we've got from Sean Connery to Daniel Craig. What's the difference? What's the difference? Come on now, wake up. 50 years. James Bond celebrating 50 years at the same time as P9. Daniel's not wearing the girl. He's not wearing <laughs> But the one thing that's the he same. Didn't, he didn't have the... The gun. gun. He hasn't got the gun. He hasn't got the cigarette. He hasn't got the braces. Different car. He has been to the gym. No, he had the same car. <laughs> The same car. So the car stayed the same. The focus in the eyes has stayed the same. What else has changed? What else has changed? What does James Bond do differently today than he did 50 years ago? 
Come on, young people, tell us. <laughs> he wears different clothes. Yeah. Well, he's still a man. <laughs> because they have really good networks. So uh, they may not know how to do everything themselves, but they know someone who, who does know and they can get things done that way. But building on your, your tree or tea, whatever, um, the other thing is that to be part of a high value network where you can solve problems readily, you have to have something to contribute yourself. So you have to have your own technical depth to be able to contribute to the rest of the network uh, and everyone within that network helps each other. <laughs> 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 One of the things 
things, one of the things I was talking to Dee about this yesterday, um, my, my vision for, for, for what I saw come out of the, the next, next SMI um, presentations the other day was that you, you can't have those roots going to branches as, as um, Sharma said, but you need a trunk in the middle and that's the vision that, that brings all those, those technical depth through the, the, the trunk to the branches and the branches is where the collaboration happens. The branches is where those various different trees, if, if we've got three trees at the SMI, it's the branches where the collaboration is going to happen, but it needs a vision that comes through the trunk um, to bring those technical depths together. But I don't know, that's my kind of... So it needs tending, but it doesn't need overlap. Yeah. Yeah. Constraining, because you'll end up with a stunted bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> of 
being a technical person and a VAT training, they saw, they saw problems, they saw things that they would be looking at and dealing with. And it was interesting, I expected that it would be 10 o'clock by the time I got to this point. But it's not. But it's good that I've been um, a bit thought-provoking. The opportunities are always there. It doesn't matter at any time. It's the people who actually identify the opportunity. Whether we are in a cave, whether we are not, the people who actually think, they always find out opportunities. It is nothing that sort of now this generation has got more opportunity than every generation and the future generation will have more opportunity. I don't think that's right. Opportunities are always there. It is the human mind needs to identify what is suitable to that time. That's it. It's, it's nothing like sort of, not like the, every generation will have the same opportunity. It's your ability to take it. That's what I think. The nature gives every species the same opportunity. For you to take it or leave it. If you take it, you are at you sustain you you sustain for longer time. If you don't take it, you don't adapt. You left it. Dance. Simple Darwinian theory. You don't theory. adapt. You die. <laughs> yeah. So what's the comment on that? Do you think Sean is right? Do you think the opportunities are the same, or do you think things have changed? I think they've changed because, and, and the big change is technology, yeah. and, and that helps us broaden out. And, and, and at a much greater speed. I mean, it's not the same. That's the important one, is the speed. Yes. The speed is <coughs> increasing, or appears to be increasing. It appears to be increasing. <laughs> Chris, you've got some comment to add. Yeah, I, I think it's not so much technology, it's wealth. So, wealth has been created by technology, but it's wealth that allows us to do things. Uh, money is a means of allocating resources to, to what we're, we're going to be doing. If you just take an example of my family, uh, my grandmother migrated from England to New Zealand in 1923. She never went back. She never saw her home again. Migrants today coming to Australia go home maybe every year to see their family. Uh, the difference is wealth and the ability to pay for what it is that you want and the opportunities. So the opportunities are there because we're so rich. If we were poor, uh, we'd be focused on growing the food that we needed to sustain ourselves. Because we have all that wealth, we can spend the money on other things and do other things. That's why the opportunity is limitless. But, but okay, sorry, actually, can I just stop right there? Sorry, the opportunities are greater, they're not limitless. <laughs> okay, I would like somebody under 30 to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> not Grant. Grant, you can be next. Okay, I want somebody that's come from, from a different land. Somebody who's come from a different land. Chris is saying it's not technology, it's wealth. Someone has come from a different land. Because technology allows us to do this street cheaper. It's not basically you earn more, you have more money so you can afford it. I mean, if you go back a while ago, so. For that travel, you, you have to spend like a month to go back to your home and come back. So it doesn't want to do that. But now I can do it at night, go back to my country and then spend some time and then come back. And that I think is because technology allowed us to do this type of activity cheaper and faster. <coughs> um, I think uh, because of the environmental change and the constraint, constraint for, for all the opportunity here. Because it's like a, before, of course, the distance may be the constraint, but now the other can be the constraint. So this is, I think the constraint, because some of opportunity we can go to get food, some of the opportunity may, may not be able to go further because of the constraint. Alice, you've got a little bit. <laughs> I agree with Shana. The opportunities are limitless for every generation. And I think that every generation lives in an extraordinary time. Their tools are different. Um, they, what they see is their opportunity is different. Maybe the amount of money they have or the technology that they have in front of them is different. But every person, and I think it's a personality type maybe, can get up in the morning and say, what are my opportunities? They're limitless, D. And that day could be any date. Actually. Actually. Okay. Useful. Let, let me have Doug and then you and then... Sure. 
Oh, Cha. Okay, sorry, we're going to go to yeah. the youngest in the room. Cha, go. I think now the opportunity is because now the information is transferring much faster than before. I think now the opportunity is like, the whole early you know the information, and then you find the chance. Yeah, you get the information and you find the chance, yeah, and you yeah, can get so it quicker. Like a, we have a saying in China, like, who is the first person that uh, eats the crab? So, it's like that. So, you are the first person to know the information, and you got the idea, you get the opportunity. And you get the crab. Yeah. <laughs> and then in the morning. Excellent. It's Can you get worse? <laughs> <laughs> We have really really worms. I prefer I'm more inclined to agree with um, Sharma on, on this one. I think it doesn't matter. Like every generation, every age has had like a defining invention which has changed things radically. Whether it be the wheel or the internet, like the number of opportunities that you can find may change depending on what technology is available. But that doesn't necessarily mean there is more or less. Like I could start a business much easier today because I could get on Kickstarter and someone could fund me for doing pretty much nothing. But that doesn't mean that there's more opportunities. This is the opportunities are different. Yeah, yeah no, that's well well put. Okay, so now you've been like very special The thing that tweaked to me when Chris was saying well we're more wealthy, but that money is a representation of ownership of capital. So um, and and when you go to five <coughs> capital models that there is a lot more capital in terms of manufactured capital. Um, and we all have that in terms of an you know, iPhone or the ability to get on a plane. There's more of it, so we're more wealthy in that respect. But, but to make that manufactured capital, you are, uh, there's a limit of, of natural capital to, to, to make it with. Yeah. So the, the point is, yes, there's more opportunity because of our, our harnessing of, of the world and, and turning it into manufactured capital. Um, but we haven't made any more land or any more air. <laughs> or gold. So, or gold. so, yes, we might be more wealthy, but we don't own as much land as people used to own because there's 7 billion people now when there used to be you know, one. So uh, the amount of natural capital to share around is less, so there's going to be a lot more competition over that. It's, it's that that's what's really changing. As you get more and more people, they can produce more manufactured capital, but the natural capital is, is less per person to share around. And I can see there's going to be a lot more conflict over it. Yeah. I also see an uneven distribution. Chris talks about us being more wealthy, but I think there's a much more uneven distribution of wealth and opportunity. Do you think that's really true? I don't know. I mean, some of the kings, you know, the, back in medieval times, they, they were pretty wealthy yeah. compared to their serfs. Yes, they do. Just a figure, I mean, there's still around a billion people in the world living on less than a dollar a day. So this narrative is a, is a first world narrative, it's not a global narrative. And the opportunities they have are more limited than ours. Yeah. And for that reason, their opportunities are more limited than ours. Yeah, but they, they can get on the internet and have... Not if they haven't got any money to pay for the internet. It's still going to leave. It's still going to get it. Okay. It's only true so, true. Motion, then... And then, okay, motion yeah, I think one of the things is, uh, for, I mean, this generation and the limit of knowledge and the access that they have to knowledge is there, make their vision is a little bit broader than basically the past. Yeah, so maybe they, it's that, that make it easier for them to identify more opportunities. Uh, I think yeah. in the past it was very limited, so your vision was very limited because you didn't have access enough to all of knowledge, basically. But now it's very easy. If you look at the younger generation, in terms of level of understanding, yeah. you know, I compare my daughter to myself, the age of seven, how much she's thinking and what, what level of thinking she has and then what level of thinking I had when I was seven. So that's because the ability of knowledge that is uh, basically they have the, the own generation. Yeah, the ability right. of getting the data is more. The data doesn't mean knowledge. More wisdom. <laughs> more wisdom. <laughs> more wisdom. They, can, they can get a lot of data. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, uh, there's no, if you take David Attenborough's view. This view, what you're talking is thinking we are the human species, we own this earth. Both. Okay? We don't own this <coughs> earth. We are at equal rights like any other species. If you take actually that view of it, 
we got to be very careful, and that's one of the things that we need to we need to start looking at if you really want to go to pure social and then environmental ecosystems and all those things. Currently, we're looking at as human beings, we got some kind of a right to own own this world, and then either it's up to us to decide what is necessary. Who are we to decide if we really take the nature's perspective? <coughs> okay, if you take from David Attenborough's point of view, he says that we are all the same. All the species have got the same right to this earth. We are this planet. Yeah. If you take that one, the wealth is only being transferred from to other because we have not created a new world. Except we only went and discovered the other things. Actually, we have not created another planet. So we have not created any new wealth. You're only transferring wealth from one to other. If you really take a whole different perspective, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. That's a pure philosophical yeah. sort of no yeah, well, way the point is to get us to a philosophical space. <laughs> Individual choice, and I think there's a community choice. Yeah, well, <laughs> thank you for picking up that. Okay, we can come back again and get different people's input on it. But Sam, you had a comment to make. Yeah, uh, coming back to this particular side, the opportunity are limitless for the, this generation. But I think most of the discussion here is pertaining from the advanced or the first world country. For me, the question is. Is everybody in this generation have equal opportunity? Are given equal opportunity? Are they? Are they has the? Are they having the opportunity to get equal opportunity? So that is the question that we need to ask. For example, a boy in Australia is he the exposure or the kid in Australia he is having the, such an exposure? Okay, with good schools, good environment, everything. That's probably the, that's the reason why people migrated to migrate here. But if you think about another third world country, or in nowadays some countries are in the world, are the kids there having the same and equal opportunity like the kids who are staying in this country? So, in a way, I think the opportunity are limitless for this generation. For me, I don't really agree with that. Okay, because it depends on where you are and what is your environment. And I think everybody should be passive. In, in a way, we, are, we should be seeking for opportunity, that's true. Okay, we should put, put our effort for seeking for opportunity, but the system itself should facilitate that. If the system is not facilitating a person for seeking opportunity, I don't think so that uh, people will have the equal opportunity. So, so what constitutes the system in your mind? The family, the community? The school, the country, the government, the government. Yeah. Yes. So, so what? What? Yeah. Uh, I think it's it's, it's different. That's, that's what it is. I'll take an example. Let's take Gandhi. When Gandhi was in India or in South Africa, he did not have the same opportunity for other people, but he took the opportunity, fought, and then did it. That is for the individual to do it. The system allows it or not. It is up to you to change the system if you think the system is not allowing you to. That is your opp no, That is what is, is an opportunity. Every individual has got the same opportunity. It is up to you to take it. Some systems may allow it, may not allow it, but it's at the same time. For you to take it or not to take it. If Gandhi has not taken it, everybody else would have been the same thing. The same thing for the Jesus Christ or whoever it all the readers. That is what is the leadership is needed as an individual. It has to come from within. Nobody gives the leadership to you. Leadership has to come within. But do you think Gandhi would have the same opportunity today as he had back then? I mean, I've, I've been to the, um, the place where he, he did a lot of his activism in South Africa, um, the Phoenix Settlement. And there, he had his own um, kind of paper pressing 
the thing. So he, he made his own newsletters that he would send around the neighborhood. Nowadays he'd be on technology, he'd be on the internet publishing these things worldwide and everyone would be That's seeing what was happening. Gondi's philosophy. Gondi's philosophy is not his philosophy if he saw something which he thought was wrong, he fought against it even though the system did not allow him to do it. He would have used the internet to do it if he was today. <laughs> I think it's impact will be great. Absolutely right. right. But the opportunity is still the same. Impact yeah. is different. Yes. I mean, yeah. uh, maybe you need, you're missing. There, there's one opportunity and there's the other ability to, 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 to uh, solve or to, uh, to, to define some of the opportunities that you're able to so that's solve. Attitudes and abilities for me, that those are really important. They come with them. Yeah. I agree with you. Jan, you had something to say. It perhaps ties to that. I was thinking that the, the problem with thinking about something as limitless is, is that you're not acknowledging the limits and that why people put their helmets on at certain times. So, I mean, I think we are all of it. Whether you think of opportunities in terms of the resources, be it wealth, be it other assets, etc., that you're going to use to achieve a vision or whether you think of it as technology, you know, whatever you think of opportunities as, it is going to need something to, to achieve it, and that is limited. Whatever that is, that's finite in some senses. And so you've got to, you've got to recognise what bits are finite and what bits are not. And my other problem with this... Sorry, let me just finish that. It starts with the hours in the day. Yes. The does. 24 hours of the day, that starts, that's our first finite resource. That's Sorry, right. now yeah. carry on. And my other problem with this one links to what people are saying about it being a first world thing. The opportunities are limitless for this generation. And if we only concentrate on this generation, we've got a problem because we have to actually make sure that we don't shut off opportunities for future generations as well. So, so it, it's one of those things that sound really nice, but when you start teasing it apart, there are hidden icebergs with, with it as well. And, and just in that vein, I, I, um, one, of the, one of the KRN slides that I found fascinating was the one where you had mining industry in the middle and then a semicircle around it um, that said we need to co-collaborate, co-invest, co-manage and co-inspire we need shared purpose, flourishing ecosystems, and competitive companies, communities, and countries. And that just jarred for me. That here was all this language about moving away, it seemed, from competition, including competition over... For me, that resources. means financially viable. Yes. And I think they were just going with the alliteration of the Cs. I think of another word for be yeah. viable that starts with yeah. C, but yeah. not Yeah, I agree with you. The, the, the thing of competition, the, you know, the command and conquer versus the connect and collaborate and create. We, we I think that's that the thing. Um, collaborative companies, because that's called uh, the Trading Trust. And you certainly don't want one company ruling the whole world, either. <laughs> so you, you, you do need you know, separate yeah. diversity of, of approaches. Yeah. And that, sure. that's a competition of ideas rather than necessarily putting a helmet on. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, we go in and just. Now is one pop, very popular word called uh, uh, data mining. Actually, I think we can call it fruitful opportunity mining. Actually, we. We will really want to get something really kind of cheap, something we really need to manage. Mining. Opportunity mining. Opportunity mining. <laughs> mining of opportunities. <laughs> okay, Chris? Yeah, just, just to underscore my point, uh, if you take Greece right now, I'm sure people there think they're living in extraordinary times. <laughs> and their opportunities are somewhat more limited than they were previously. Um, with 25% unemployment looking at getting worse, uh, can only get 66 euros out of the bank a week. Uh, so they won't be spending a lot of money paying for internet connections and so on right now. But they do have democracy on Sunday, so they can vote. <laughs> 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 They've still got that, Chris. 
<laughs> <laughs> they're choices. Yeah, they're, they're voting choices. for more money from the European Union. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> On these two, I think that it's important to remember that ecosystems are a balance of competition and, and collaboration. There's no ecosystems that don't have competition for resources. In there. <coughs> That's what makes them find all those it's niches. It's <laughs> when they find all those niches. Exactly, yeah. Now, I think our generation has the opportunities they have because the opportunities that were available to the previous generation were realised. Yeah. It's not enough to identify the opportunity, you have to realise it. That's what it's about. Take the helmet off, identify the opportunity, and then realise that opportunity. Yeah. Options, choices, consequence. Yeah. We have opportunities today from what was done yesterday. So what are we doing today for tomorrow? Okay, now I'm happy. <laughs> else Pascal, come on, someone from my homeland. You've got a, you've got something from Zimbabwe to add. What's the Zimbabwe perspective on what you've heard today? They're all millionaires, aren't they? <laughs> so, They're all millionaires, aren't they? They're all millionaires in Zimbabwe. Pascal, what have you got to say about Zimbabwe? Um, that is me. I'd say um, about Zimbabwe. Uh, Opportunities. Um, are there, but are they like Sam was saying, it also has a lot to do with, with the environment. Um, even in that environment, I know some people who want us to rise to grab the great opportunities that are available, but it's not probably conducive to our environment. And um certainly a lot of mineral wealth there. There yeah. is certainly a lot of mineral wealth, and that, that is the probably the whole issue that would bring about the, the issue in terms of sustainability. To say for some well <coughs> endowed countries like Zimbabwe, uh, the vast area of minerals, but if you look at um, where we are in terms of our GDP and what we are contributing to the world, it is not uh, talking to what we have in terms of uh, the resources. And, and That's an interesting observation. The delivery is not in accordance with potential. Yes. That's yes. really that's really nicely well put. And there's much more potential than there is delivery. Yes. And it's a question of how how to change that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so my final slide is this one. The quote is from the Bible, it's from Job, written in the 2nd millennium BC, about 1800 to 2000 BC. There's a mine for silver and a place where gold is refined. So those of you who have had a lot of interaction with me will know that in my time at the JK, one of the things that's become very clear to me is that I may have been working in mineral processing for a long time, but actually what I deal with really is living gold. So really what is my niche in life? My niche in life is living gold. It's the talent that's in people and that gets processed just like gold in the <laughs> gold in the ground. You can't always see where it is, but um, it's pointless digging the dirt if it's not there. But there is a way of doing that and that's really been my thing. And I believe that this place, which was a silver mine, is a place where gold is refined. So I guess my closing, my closing words is that this place has huge potential. This place has huge potential and it's really a tribute to all the young people and all the, all the refining of the gold that's living that happens here. So thank you very much everybody. to think of this and I put some supporting documents um, and everything on my public and you can take it off before midnight when it gets clear. Um, I, I decided there were so many different um, angles I could have taken and pieces of work I could have done um, from Xaro, um, from um, Olitech, from Marcus Ritter, from um, other places. So all that is all collated and that's on my public for the 24 hours. Thank you very much everyone. Cheers. Now it's tea. <laughs> Thanks, Rita.